Hi, my name is James Leone. Today is October 20th, 2011, and I'm going to walk you through the steps to get your Ubuntu working. Um, probably a little better now that you've upgraded to Ubuntu 11.10. Um, in Ubuntu 11.04, you'd have the option to log in using the classic Ubuntu interface, but um, in the new version, that I'm restarting right now, uh, you don't. And at least on my system, when I try to install uh, the fallback um, option that was there before, which is called the, the GNOME shell, I quickly found out that, that wasn't going to work. And so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to have you install something called KDE, and then um, you can use that. The interface is a little bit different, but um, it's more like uh, Windows is normally, so it shouldn't be that much of a learning curve to figure out where things are. So right now, if all is going well, I've just switched back to the Light DM login manager myself, and so if all goes well, I should be greeted by the same thing that most users are when they uh, by default, uh, when they first log in, I'll be asked for a password, I'll have choices to which system I want to log into, and then um, at that stage, um, I'll show you what steps you need to take. It's a little more technical, and you. one thing I do want to say is you really want to make sure that you follow all the, follow all the steps. <laughs> that I do, otherwise you can end up uh, in, in trouble. So make sure you follow all the steps. Now using this droid, I hope that the, um, the microphone is picking up my voice well enough that you can hear me. If not, you know, just turn it up because I'm not going to get much louder than this, I don't think. I'm trying to speak a little louder than I normally do. Um, okay, so to start out, what we're going to do, the first thing we have to do is we have to install the software for the other environment, right? So on the left-hand side here, you see all these different icons, and you're probably going to have a lot less than I do. You scroll down here. I, what I'm looking for in my case is something called the terminal, okay? And I'm going to click on that. And the reason why I'm not using the Ubuntu Software Center here is because, frankly, I just can't easily find what I'm looking for. So the first thing you want to type in is sudo synaptic. Uh, you don't need to capitalize any of those things. Then after you type that word, those two words, and you press enter, which I'll do, uh, it'll ask you for the password. You supply your password, and then a window will come up. And then I'll tell you what to do at that stage. And you don't want the caps lock on like I do. <laughs> now, a little trick here. You notice I typed S Y N A P, and all of a sudden the T I C popped up. But what I did, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back there. I push the tab key. When I press the tab key. It finishes it for me if that's the only application in the system spelled in that manner. And that's gonna ask me for my password. Supplied, and then this box will come up, and what you're going to search for is KDE Desktop. Now, on my system, I already have KDE Desktop installed, but I'm going to um, show you how to install, how uh, the system reacts when I, you know, install, you know, other pieces of <laughs> pieces of software, just so you can see what it looks like. Okay. So, um, but what you're interested in having installed on your system specifically are the, is uh, KDE base apps, KDE plasma desktop, KDE standard. Now if these options aren't here that's because I have uh, additional sources. Um, you know what, I'm just gonna go get the printout that I just had. Here's my computer. Let's 
see what this guy says. Are the right options to take? says to pick KDE standard. And that's he says it's all you really have to do. So KDE stand so this is the way it's gonna look. Uh, let's see if I can find something that oh it's KDE artwork, right? You don't need this, but what will happen is you'll click on the app you want to install, and you're going to mark it for installation, and it says, well, I got to install these stuff too, all these things too, and you say, that's fine with me, go ahead and mark them for installation. Then you're going to click apply, and then you're going to click apply again, and then it's going to say, we're downloading some files. You're going, to down, you're going to wait for all those to download, then it's going to say it's installing, and you let it install, and then once this is done, and it'll be done because there will be a, an orange bar that will scroll across the screen from left to right. Oh, I hope I didn't run out. No, good. Okay, there we go. And once that's done, it'll say changes applied, and then you close and you close that by clicking the X. Okay, so now you're here in this. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to get out of this situation where we're stuck in this um, this environment. Because <laughs> it's just it's going to be hard to find your apps basically if you have more than just a few on there. Um, so I'll get to that, and you want to make sure that you've done the first set of procedures that I did. You want to select KDE standard, and also I, I'm just going to go over some other things. I'm going to go back in there and show you what I have installed. Um, again, I searched for the term KDE desktop just to show you what I have. I have the base apps, I have base apps data. But one thing that you want to be sure that you have, that when you're done, it's it's installed, it's green, is this KDM. The other stuff isn't all that important. You can always add these other apps later. But you do want to have KDM. And that's the login manager. And we're going to switch from the default login manager to use that login manager. Okay, so we're done. And also... It's not going to be as quick for you to get all those KDE components installed. Uh, it's going to take a while for it to download and, and install and finish. So it's not going to be as quick as what I just showed you. I just did that one installation of that one application to let you see what it looks like when it happens and, and, and how you know it's finished. Now this thing's called the terminal, but if I would have just, you know, if I just told you open the terminal, you might not know what I mean. So it's better to show it. Now, um, I'll try to keep my hands straight too, I guess. Now, the next step is a two-step process, and if you forget step two, you're going to be in trouble. So, this is where you want to make sure you get this right. So, step number one is you're going to use sudo dpackage-reconfigure-gdm. That's as, that's as if this is one word, dpkg slash reconfigure space GDM. So I'm going to do it over here. <laughs> ah, pseudo first. <laughs> have to put sudo in there first, otherwise it won't let you do it. And what will come up is this thing. And it gives you technical explanation. It doesn't really tell you the danger you're in. If you pick the wrong one, if you don't have GDM or you didn't do the first step and you pick KDM, and you say OK and you reboot, even if you follow the next step that I'm going to show you and you reboot and KDM you didn't do the first step, you'll just get a black screen. 
and that's a little more difficult to get out of. Most people will give up at that point, um, but there is a way to get out of that situation. I myself got out of that situation today, but um, I'll probably show how to get out of that situation in a different presentation, but for now just make sure you follow all the steps. And so I'm doing this designed to be for, the, if you just follow the steps, absolute beginner should be able to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the up arrow key to select KDM. And that's why I said when you were in the in synaptic, when you went pseudo synaptic and the box came up, I want to make sure that to the left of KDM the box was green. That means you have it installed. If you don't have it installed, you get the black the black screen because it won't respond when it tr system tries to call it up. Now I'm going to use the tab key and I'm going to tab over to OK and I'm going to say OK. Now, one thing that's important that it says here. Be sure to run dpackage configure KDM. You have to do sudo first because you have to be root to do this. But if you don't do that, you'll get the black screen. So dpkg configure. And every time I've done this, it gives me an error message, but it doesn't, hasn't mattered at all. So don't know why. So that's what it looks like. I got it written down here. Two slashes there if you can't see it. Press enter. And now we should be done, even though it says there's, ah, KDM is already installed and configured. Well, if you don't do that, <laughs> you get the black screen. So even though it's telling you, yeah, it doesn't matter. We're okay, we're good. Now we can type the word reboot. And actually, pseudo reboot, because we have to be root to reboot, actually. And we want the cat box off. There goes. It's going into reboot cycle. So, if all went well, what will happen is it will boot me back in and it will actually log me straight into KDE without me having to enter a password. But that's just me because I've already been in there and I've tweaked a few settings, but I'll show you how to tweak those settings uh, once we get in. Now I'm trusting that this guide here is correct and that all you have to select is KD standard. I would think that's right. It sounds right to me. Okay. So we should be rebooting. It's going to come up with a gosh awful ugly Grub 2 menu in the front. With half my OS is missing, but that's okay. That won't happen to most people. The appearance may be the same to most people, but not anything else. If that comes up at all. That only comes up if you have multiple operating systems. If you only have one, then you can just go right in. Now this newer version of Ubuntu is a little bit slower, and sometimes I wonder whether the computer's on actually look at this hard disk light flickering, I know it is. Now, actually, it might log me into the new environment without my intervention because I have it set up to do that. Which is which is fine. For now in the interregnum. So KDE will remember um, the last window manager you logged into and will um, if you have it just go ahead and log me in without a password. It'll do that for you. Now gosh, how do I pick Okay, there you go. There's a little blue arrow over here. These are all the choices of window manager environments you have. I'm going to pick KDE Plasma Workspace. It'll remember that. So this is how I did it. Clicked on the blue. I selected KDE Plasma Workspace. 
I'm going to go ahead and supply my password. And press enter. back in the environment that I like to use. If I want to use SeaMonkey, I just click. <laughs> when I use Internet Explorer, I just click. <laughs> okay, if I want to use Likes, the word processor, I just click. I got a lot of apps, and they're all right where I want them, or the email, I just click. Now, to get it to um, log you in automatically, without having to put your password in, if that's what you want. I believe, you go up here to, uh, to settings on the left, and you go to system settings. And these are all the different options. Down here, hidden to the bottom, is both, is the login screen, I believe, is that the one? Yes. This configures the login manager KDM. This is the thing we installed. You can go over to convenience. And what I've done is I've enabled the auto login. I'm pre selecting the previous user, which is me. I could actually even specify it. Focus the password means um, just put the cursor ready for me to enter the password. And then, in my case, I've enabled passwordless logins, and I've selected myself. Once you click Apply, once you restart, it'll go right back into here. So, let's do this. Now, in general, the way this works, like, for example, if you want to use games or card games, you would just go right over there. Instead of it being up at the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to restart, which you have this option. You have the option to restart when you didn't in the other environment. Now KDE doesn't ship with that wallpaper, and it doesn't ship with that color, color scheme uh, automatically. Um, I may or may not have done a presentation on that, but it'd be hard to find. I could try to do another one uh, to customize it, but at least you'll be able to find your things. There is one application that I find <coughs> completely unnecessary, and that is there's an indexer that tries to index all your files so you can find things easily, but it slows your system down so much it isn't worth the cost of the pre-indexing. So I'll show you how to um, disable that too. Now let's see how this goes when I reboot. Should take me right into to, um, KDE. which is what I want for my purposes. I don't want to muck around with the password. I just want to go, and if I want to get out, I just want to reboot, and that's it. So this is probably the sixth attempt at making this presentation I've done today. And it's ended up being about 20 minutes. And you can tell it's actually doing something because the light's flickering. Um, Now, before I get too long and get too large of a movie file on my droid here, um, I will say that I'm, for the for most users, I'm not really all that happy with the way that Ubuntu's got this laid out. Um, it relies too heavily on searching to find things and tries to hide things from the users way too much, and it's really not intuitive, you know, at least at least with what I'm used to using. Um, there could be, you almost, you almost get the feeling like, uh, is there an icon for every application I have installed here? And, you know, I'm not quite sure that that's the case. Okay, so back in here, it worked exactly the way I thought it would. So those two steps, if you miss, if you miss the second step, what will end up happening, I guess I could do this, Well, end up happening is you'll just get a black screen, and that's it. 
um, and pressing enter, typing things won't really do anything for you. The only thing that will do something for you is the old trick of using another another virtual terminal to log in. And so you type Control Alt and then F2 in one stroke. Control Alt F2. A black screen will come up, and I'll say, you know, it'll give you a login screen, but on a black screen, and you just type root, and then your password, and or your username and password, and then you make sure that you do both those steps before you reboot, then you'll be okay. All right. Now, some of the settings, I happen to have this icon over here, but I've already shown where it is. We'll just do it again, I guess. So we got settings and then system settings and they're talking about the KDE system um, okay one thing I don't have enabled and I never want to have enabled if I want to search for something I'll use <laughs> standard you know the good old search when it happens because it, it every time something changes on the hard disk it, it just it's too what you want to do is uncheck this box and you'll see a very very large performance boost now you might get some warning messages down here about um, some nepo monk or some other thing is not is not working um, it's really nothing to worry about and there'll be a little link you can click on that warning and it'll tell you oh yeah right so to get rid of that warning I'll just do it this way to get rid of the warning it's gonna be a little more technical and by the way your icons aren't gonna be placed like this the way I, the way I have them you, you, but you can place icons on the desktop by going to a menu item as I do digress a little bit here um, and then right clicking on it selecting add to desktop and then you can move it around as you see fit now to get rid of the warning that's going to come up when you disable the um, anaconda thing this this desktop search thing you'll still be able to search for things so this isn't involved it just won't be as fast but it'll only be minutely slow because you have a powerful computer but your performance in KDE will be much faster. This should not be on by default. I think it's a big, big mistake. So, and then as a result of unchecking that box, you get some other warning. And to deal with that warning, <coughs> if I remember this right, you're first going to want to go to View, and you want to say Show Hidden Files. Make sure that box is checked. Then you're going to go down, scroll down, and see a bunch of additional files. And these are basically configurations for your workspace. And in the local directory and under share, there is a folder called Akonati. Hmm. I, did I get that wrong? Or it's, it's not the other one or maybe it's not there because I got it <laughs> well I, this is looking good <laughs> uh, maybe it's under KDE Bear with me here. It's config. Yes, okay, so it's under .config Akinati. And you're looking for a, a file, it's a text file, that's called Akinati Serve RC. That one. And if it's got a pencil in it, in my, as in my case, you can click on it to edit it. But just to be sure, I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to open this with KWrite. What you want to do is you want to say start server equals false. And as a result, 
the error message you see down there will no longer appear. Then you save it. Click on the Save button. And you're done. You restart and you're happy. I'm happy, we're all happy. Okay, so now how do you get the desktop background to be different? Right click on it, I believe. No, you don't. Uh, in fact, I, you know, I'm going to stop because I don't want to run out of disk space, and I'll do that presentation with my other camera.